Hey friends, how's everyone today? I was sitting down to make some ephemera, so I thought I would just turn the camera on and um, talk about this cute little pocket. Do you remember when we were little kids, elementary school, um, I remember learning to make this pocket when I was a little kid, and we actually, we would fold this one back too, and open it like that and fill it with water and then use it to drink water. And I think it was something that I learned in, I don't know, kindergarten or first grade, or maybe it was Girl Scouts, or maybe it was Cub Scouts, because all my brothers were in scouting and my mom was a den mother. Um, but I remember learning it very young, how to you know take a piece of paper and make this little cup and um, be able to drink. So if I was in some place where it wasn't safe to touch the water source with my mouth, I could always make a little cup. Anyway, I thought these would make great little ephemera pockets uh, for journals. And this is just a little one here, but I thought it would make some um, of different sizes for journals that I have upcoming. So that's why I thought I would just uh, pop on the camera and show you how. Uh, I pulled out four different pieces of paper here of all different sizes to show you that um, this pocket can be made of any size. I'm going to glue that down on that side there. Um, this pocket can be made of any size and it works. It can take up the whole page and be stuffed full of stuff or it can be one tiny little pocket in a corner um, that has something small in it and act as a, a corner tuck spot. Uh, you know, all the things that we do, you can do any of it with um, this little pocket. So the thing, only thing about it is that you need a square piece of paper. It needs to be exactly square. So um, you can take any, let's just start with this small one. I think this is probably the same size as this one, as our prototype here. Um, let me find a paper cutter. Pull it up here. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways to make a square piece of paper. And I think the easiest, first of all, I'm gonna clean up this edge here because it was pulled out or was cut out maybe with a box cutter and isn't very straight. So I'm gonna clean that up. There we go. I'm not gonna worry about going all the way down because I know that it's not going to, um, a square is not going to go all the way down to the bottom here. So I could measure this and then I could measure this side and cut it and hope that they're exactly the same. But I think that the easiest way to make a square is to just do this. Actually, it's probably upside down so you can see there. Okay, put the corner together, exactly together, match up the sides, and sometimes you have to pull this side down if you've got a little too far up, okay? My corner's together, my sides are matched. Well, they were matched. <laughs> uh, sides are matched. There you go, got a square. Okay, there's things we can do with that one too, another pocket I'm thinking of. But now I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna cut it right here and I'll have an even square. So I'm gonna line that up. You probably can't see that exactly on the cutter, but there we go. So I cut off that piece. Now I could actually take this piece and do that again, which I might do and make some tiny ones. How cute. Um, let me do this. Put the corner. Together. Awkward angle, but that's okay. We can do it. Okay. Corner together, line up the sides, up down the side, and cut it off right at the line. There's another perfect square. Okay. So let's go back to this one. And so now we have it folded in a triangle, which is exactly what we want to do. Doesn't really matter which way you put it, except I will say if you're holding it in a triangle and the valley is down there, whatever you're looking at on the back side here, that's what's going to be up here. So if it matters to you, if you want to see something specific or you want the writing to be going a specific way, 
Um, sometimes we just, you know, decorate them up, embellish them, and, and so you don't see the writing anyway. But if you want the writing go a certain way, then you want to look at that. So this one, the writing is actually going the right way. If I was looking at it this way and the writing's upside down, I might just turn it around and go, okay, I'm going to do it this way. Okay, so now what we do is, this is so easy. Well, no, it's brain surgery. It's so easy. And um, I did this in okay, what, kindergarten or first grade. So easy one to remember. We're going to take this corner and we're going to fold it over to this side. Now, what I want is for this line right here to be straight, perfectly straight. So in order to get that, I'm going to line the bottom up. I always do things the easy way. Line it up on my paper cutter. Okay. So when I fold this over, I can tell at what point the point is going to reach. We want it to reach this edge. But see, I could do that or I could do that. So when the point meets the edge and when I'm going to crease this over here, a point that should be in a straight line and I can line that up with my paper cutter. So I can see that this is halfway between those two lines, but this is almost at that line. So I need to come down a little bit and that looks pretty darn good right there. Let's see. Make sure I'm still on the line. If you've never tried making videos, you should. You whip this stuff out all day long and then you get on the video and it's awkward angle and you're trying to just be efficient and hurry through it and everything slides around and messes up. Okay, see how we did that? We just folded it. So easy. Now we're gonna take the other side and we're gonna bring it over and right at that point, that's where we're gonna crease it. And this should line up with that, which means that this point should go over to this corner, just like the first one did. So if I bring that point over right to the corner, there it is. There it is. That point is in the corner, and that point made it to the corner. Okay, so let's do that one more time. We have a square. Maybe you start with a square. Maybe you already have paper cut in squares. Okay, paper cut in squares. Fold it in half diagonally so that you have a triangle. Bring one point up to meet the other flat side so that this line here is straight, perpendicular to this, not perpendicular, parallel to this line on the bottom, okay? And then we're gonna fold this side up. We have a guide now, that corner, and this point meets that corner, okay? There we go. There's our pocket. Now we've got two, maybe, there we go. We've got two pieces up here. We're gonna fold the top one down And then we're going to tuck it in the front fold over pocket. Okay, we want to tuck it in the front. If you tuck it in the back, then that front can still flap free. So by tucking it in the front, I don't think I folded it all the way down to, there we go. So it should go all the way in. And you know what, if it doesn't line up perfectly, I always try to make it line up perfectly, but if it doesn't, don't worry about it because by the time you finish decorating it, it'll all be, that'll all be covered up anyway. You won't even see it, okay? So there we go, there's our pocket. Just like this one with one piece of paper on top. That's our cup, that's our drinking cup. Survival skills, people. This is survival skills. If you can't, if you don't want to use a public fountain because you're trying to protect your health, you can always fold a piece of paper like this and get water out of the fountain and drink it that way. Great survival skills. Okay, so you can just leave it like that or we can take just a little bit of glue, which I think we're gonna do. We're gonna use our art glitter glue because it is super quick drying for paper. And I'm just gonna run a bead on the inside, get it out without 
come squirting out right on the inside of that pocket there and then press this down. And all that does is keep that little flap from coming out as this gets handled and moved around. Perfect. Okay, so there's one. Let's make this tiny one. This looks cute. Okay, which paper do we want? All right, so that's kind of going wonky. If I turn it around this way, there's really nothing there. So I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try folding it the other direction. Let's see what I get. Okay, paper, the words are going the right direction. I like that. So let's set it down here and fold this side up. Let's see. That looks like it's about parallel. Bring the other side up to match it. Okay, there we go. So now I'll fold down the front one. And then we'll tuck it in the front pocket. So while I'm doing this, grab a couple pieces of paper. Doesn't matter what size they are, because I've got some larger ones here. And make one with me. Make one and don't glue it down so you have a prototype that you can look at to remember how you folded it later. That's what you want to do. Hang on to one that's not glued up. It can be decorated, but not glued up. Okay. Make sure I didn't get too much glue and glue that down. And there we go. Tiny little drink cup. Tiny little pocket. Okay. All right. So let's go a little bit larger. This is a dictionary page, which is a really nice thin page. Let me clean up the side a little bit. There we go. And then let's fold it to make a square. You know, if you have a six by six or eight by eight, if you want to do it out of um, scrapbook paper, it works best on the with the thinner paper. The really the cardstock, um, heavier papers like that, they don't fold so well. They aren't as, as pliable in this situation, and it does tend to get really thick. So the thinner scrapbook paper that sometimes you're not sure what to do with works great for this. So if you have a six by six or an eight by eight, that's already a square. It should be a perfect square. If it's not, if you fold it like this to get your triangle and it's not a perfect square, just trim off the side um, that you need to. All right, so I open it up and I can see, well, that's going the right direction. I don't know what it says. Looks like some French words, but it's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and use that because the other side would be upside down. Okay, so let's fold it in half. Did you grab a piece of paper? Doing this with me? Get your square. And then we're gonna fold this, making sure, making sure that fold is parallel to our bottom fold. Okay, and then we're going to fold the other side up. And this point Maybe I didn't get exactly right, because that point should match. Oh, there it is, okay. And then crease that. If your paper's a little thicker and it's harder to crease, just get a bone folder and go down here. You know, fingernails work great too, but this is super thin paper, um, a dictionary page, so it creases fairly easily. All right, fold the front one down, and then we're going to tuck it in. Tuck it into the front flap. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I do like that little bead of glue that just keeps that from coming out of the front flap. You can use any glue you want. Um, you could do glue stick, but it's hard to get in there, you know, and get all the way to the 
edge without tearing the sides of your pocket. Um, but honestly, any other glue that you use on paper would work just fine here. I just happen to like the art glitter glue because it dries really quickly, dries clear. Um, now, see, when I press that down, I didn't push it up, and so that's not even, but that's okay. We can just decorate right over the top of that. Okay, so there's a third. Let's go to some larger pieces of paper. So here is um, some music paper, and, ooh, on the Magic Lake. That sounds fun, doesn't it? Okay, so there's another uh, way that you can get your square without trimming up this side first. You can go ahead and line this up perfectly on that side and fold it to the triangle. Okay, now where I would normally cut this off to meet the perfect square, I'm going to cut them both. just enough to trim them up, but I want to make sure that my paper is absolutely straight. I probably should have pulled out my bigger, oops, that's not perfectly straight. I probably should have pulled out my bigger cutter, but this one takes up less room, so I thought I would just leave that one there. Okay, now look how fun this is. Let's see. We can do with that. We can make us a little, a little music one. We got what direction? I'm gonna clean that up there just to. You know what? I'm gonna take that all the way up to the music, and I turn that. I'm looking at what where my point would be to see what will be visible. Okay, I'm gonna do it this way. Got the point. So I hope you all are staying safe. This is a crazy time in our world right now. And um, social distancing, which sounded kind of funny at first to a lot of people, has become a very real and a very important thing. So I hope you're all taking it seriously and practicing social distancing. And uh, to be safe. It's just too scary what's happening to people around us. So, okay, so we've got a tiny music page and a large music page. Let's take this one and turn it into our pocket. Okay, so remember we want our bottom to be straight on a line and then we want this point to come up. We want it to meet that line, but we want this line to be parallel to that line. So, Gonna have to scoot way over and get those two. Hopefully I'm not sticking my head under in front of you, but can't see without getting over the top of it. Yeah, definitely needed the bigger cutter for the bigger page, huh? Okay, let's see. That's gonna fall just below that mark and that one too. I think that'll work. This is a little bit thicker page, but I don't think it needs a bone folder. I think my fingers will do the trick there. Okay, so let's bring this one over to meet this point. There we go. There we go. Okay, fold down the front. Now, see that music is upside down, but that's okay, because you can see all the music on the front, and we'll go ahead and embellish it so that that really um, isn't the focal point anyway. So, all right, let's put this in. Tuck it away in there. You have to kind of push it in to make sure that this point comes back up and isn't pushed down a little bit by the paper that we just tucked into it. There we go. All right, let's take the little one and fold that one as well, and then we can uh, then we can glue them both at the same time. All right, teeny tiny one here. Okay. 
Where is our parallel point? Right there. Oh, how cute. I love teeny tiny things, don't you? Little miniatures. So cute. Speaking of, we have chickens in the backyard, and so it's springtime, so we got um, new chickies to replenish the flock. And uh, first time ever, we've got some bantams. Now, if you're not familiar with chickens, if you didn't grow up on a farm, uh, bantam chickens are the same as other chickens, except they're maybe a third of the size. They're like pygmy goats. They're so cute. Pygmy goats are cute because they're just tiny little miniature goats. Bantam chickens are smaller chickens, and they're just super cute. So we decided that the bantams would be um, the exotic flock. And so we got silkies and frizzles and uh, Polish. Now we already have a couple Polish. Polish are great. One day I'll show you, uh, I'll have a picture here with me and show you a picture of them or maybe introduce you to one of them. Polish have, I always call it hair, but they're feathers sticking out the top of their head like Phyllis Diller hair. <laughs> they, instead of laying down nicely and just seeing a comb on their head, they've got feathers sticking up all over the place on the top of their head. And it's, you know, some people call them Phyllis Diller chickens. They are hilarious. They are fun. They are funny. They're great pets. So we got um, bantams, which are the miniatures. Um, silkies, which are just super soft and silky all over head to toe. Frizzles, which are a lot like silkies, except their hair goes every which way. It's kind of like they just got out of bed, and as they got out of bed, they got scared to death, and so their hair's standing on end. <laughs> it always makes me laugh, because they're funny. And um, a couple more Polish, so I'm super excited as they grow up. Okay, let's try this ledger paper. This will be fun. All right. This is another big one. It's probably about the same size as the um, music paper. But because this is, well, it's only torn just a tiny bit down here. So I'm going to go ahead and make a full square. I was going to cut, um, square it up just shy of that and cut it off. But I don't think it's going to make any difference. And I do like this whole page. So awkward to do on a small cutter. But let's see if we can make that work. Check it on the other side because right where it was torn. Couldn't tell if I was laying it far enough over or not. Okay. Now we're going to trim it up right along. Let's see. Now that's hard because I can't see underneath it. So... A lot of guessing, but that worked out really well. Ooh, we could make a miniature out of that one too. Okay, so here's our great big one. Now, I like this number, 154. Oh, there's one here too, 153. I like numbers. I like numbers being um, on things that are just fun. We always put numbers, you know, what's already there. And I know that this front part would be folded inside the other, so I'm not going to worry about that little tear. So I'm going to use this side. And let's line that up. So did you get pieces of paper? And are you making these along with me? So this is something you can sit down and make while you're watching TV with hubby or with the kids and make a bunch of them. And then you can embellish them when you have time and have ephemera sitting on hand ready to go. Hardest part about putting the junk journal together is the time it takes to make everything, you know, get everything together. So you can make a bunch of these different sizes, different types of paper. You can, you could wait and embellish them until you go to use them in a journal, or you can embellish in all different uh, themes. Or if you make all your journals just in one general type theme, then you know exactly what to embellish them. 
that's kind of nice actually if you know exactly what to do because your style dictates okay bring the front down go back that one wants to go down so I want to make sure that that point stays that corner stays up there in and glue it up and then we'll embellish one or maybe two of these just to give you an idea for about a half an hour so don't want to go on too long just wanted a short video for you to get another idea if it's something that you haven't done or if you did it back when you were a kid too and just kind of forgot about it like I did for a while uh, bring it back to light. We have to think about those things we did, so, did as kids because often we can translate those into really great ideas for crafting or art, creating as it were. Okay, there's our pocket, number 153. Okay, so I'm going to move the cutter, maybe, and I'm going to grab some ink. I do like to ink the edges. You don't have to. You don't ever have to ink anything. Some people like to ink everything. Some people like to ink nothing. And some people like to ink some things. So there's our vintage photo. I'm gonna grab a couple of oxides. Um, I got raspberry right there. What else have I got here? Ooh, peacock feathers. That's a pretty one. And maybe salty ocean that's a really pretty one okay so let's I'm gonna start with the music one let me put this back in my glue if you use art glitter glue y'all know that you got to keep the pin in it or it just dries up and plugs up and you can't get it out and make sure that you use a stainless steel pin in there because if you don't, if you just put a regular straight pin in there, uh, it will rust. Trust me, it will rust. It will eat the pin. If you have a head on the pin, it'll eat the pin away from the head and rust. And um, you'll lose the pin down in the glue. Um, although it doesn't travel down in, it just stays there and blocks the hole. So, and don't ask me how I know that. So uh, just learn from my experience that you definitely want to keep a stainless steel pin in there and I was having problems where I would uh, take that pin out set it down while I'm working and I'd get so many things going on here and uh, I'd lose the pin stuff would get set on top of it and I couldn't find it and so I finally just made myself a little dangle charm dangle to go on it so that it would be a little harder for me to lose. It does help me to keep track of it. Okay, so just some quick distressing there. Paper's a little white, so we can get a little on it all over the place, but we're gonna put some stuff on it. Back doesn't matter because I intend to uh, glue it onto a page. So I'm gonna leave the back just fine. All right, let's see what we've got here. We've got a mini music. We've got several of these. Okay, so I'm going to move to one of the oxides. And you've probably seen this before if you've watched any of my other videos, um, but I just keep a tiny piece of Velcro on the back and I keep the, um, what do you call that? The sponge for each one on the back of it. So I never have to go hunt for a sponge for any individual one. It's always right there with it. Oh, this is such a pretty color, peacock feathers. I love it. Love this color. Peacock colors are my favorite. If you ask me what my favorite color is, I can't tell you a favorite color, but I could say peacock colors are my favorite colors. And there's, I don't know three or four in there. They're so pretty. It just, it's energizing to me. That's not an easy one to 
it right there. Probably doesn't matter because we'll probably cover it up anyway. Let's get the edge edge of that one. You can just make a little mess around if you want, just so it's, you know, there you go. Okay, there's a peacock feathers. And we'll put that back on. And let's do some picked raspberry. Okay, what are we going to do raspberry on? I think this dictionary page really needs vintage photo because it's thin and it is old. So let's try stress the uh, picked raspberry on this large one. Let's see what this one looks like on the ledger page. That's what it is. Could be fun. And I've got just a whole bunch of stickers that I really need to use up. So I'm going to Get stickers to work with this one or with any with all of these and see if I can use up some of my sticker stash see there's kind of a hidden pocket in there too you could stick something else in there if you wanted to yeah I know inking isn't the most exciting thing but we're really not doing that much so uh, and I know a lot of people have told me that they haven't ever really worked with the oxides, the distressed oxides. And I love the oxides. I didn't have them at the beginning. I, I you know, I didn't, I had the distress ink, the Tim Holtz distress ink, and I loved that. But I didn't have the oxides and I saw them demonstrated a couple of times and I thought, man, they're just, they're so intense. They have such great color. On them so I got a few I don't probably only have a half a dozen but I love them they're such great vibrant colors okay so that's a good one for picked raspberry and let's do one salty ocean this is a really pretty color too okay how about this one salty ocean sounds like a sailor doesn't it Okay, so tell you what, after I do this one, let's see if we can go ahead and embellish one and finish this up. Okay, there we go. So we're going to set those aside for now, and I'm, I'll do that one in vintage photo after. And probably. Okay, so we have several here. I'll do those later in Vintage Photo. We'll have several here. We'll um, look at decorating them up a bit. I've got a whole mess of stickers that I just really need to use up. This is this is the first part of the stack. Not all of them. Um, but let's see if anything... To, and I've also got here... Um, stepping on my own self... Um, I've also got next to me some faux stamps that I have made. So we can take some of these and use them. Actually, I just happened to see that. That's really pretty. And maybe we can find some others in the same um, type of coloring that's orange. These have been uh, distressed with some different colors on them. Sometimes I distress them when I make them, and sometimes I decide to wait until I know how, wh how and where I'm going to use them before choosing what ink to put on them. Um, I'm looking for something that is... Here's some greens. Greens would work. Let's see... That's a fun one. Okay. Need another something there. Maybe what we need is a piece of lace. 
be that we need a piece of lace. Let me grab something here and see if we can make this work. I have a little piece of lace that was sitting here behind me. Hmm. It's kind of a nice one too. Um, so you can even use a distress oxide on the lace. Okay, so we could do that. And we could do, start with the green. That and then do we need one more and here? It doesn't have to be the exact same type. Um, how about an actual stamp stamp? How about that? Yeah, let's do this. Let's give it a little bit of vintage photo on this one. Okay. Now what kind of lace do we want there? We want it sticking out. Well, this piece is just kind of sticking out here, bugging me. So let's get that off. And where did we go? to add some vintage photo to this. Don't ever be afraid to layer your inks either. So we had some green on that. Get a little bit of vintage photo because there's just too much white around the edge. So now you've got um, kind of the green and the vintage photo. That looks nice. And then this one has some vintage photo, but it's got the, the uh, lavender colored flowers. But let's Give it just a tiny bit of picked raspberry. That's what that is. Picked raspberry um, oxide around it to add with that vintage photo to tie it into the picked raspberry on our pocket. Okay. So if we do that, and we do that, and then we do that. Let's see. Hmm. Something isn't sitting quite right. Do we need a word there instead? Um, let's see. I'm looking. Don't have many words right by me, but I do have a few. Let's see. Um. Mm -mm -mm. Hmm, how about just beautiful? How about just beautiful? Okay, and I think I want to kind of tear it. Let's see if we can... Let's see if I can tear this all the way around. There's not a lot of paper on it to tear it. But I would like, I think, the torn look on this one. Let's see if we can get a little bit off of this side just... Give it a tear, but don't tear our word. Don't tear our beautiful. Don't tear our beautiful. Okay, and now our beautiful needs some ink, but I think it needs a vintage photo. We've got the pink on the flower behind it. There we go, yep. That's what it needs. That's exactly what it needs. Okay, how about that? Does that work? That works. I may even go around the edge of this and add a little bit of vintage photo in. Okay, so. Does that work on the lace? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to use Fab Fabri-Tac to put down the lace. Anytime I'm using fabric of any kind, uh, whether it's fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to fabric, anytime there's fabric involved, I use Fabri-Tac. Um, or um, what is it, Fabri-Fix, 
you know, any of those all made by the same company. And that is because it absolutely holds the fabric the very best. And if you found something that holds as well, then definitely let me know in the comments because I would be super interested in knowing because, you know, this is sometimes kind of messy and you stop and it keeps volcanoing over, although it didn't that time. So you always have to put the lid back on, but it's the very best for putting fabric of any kind, lace down, so it'll dry clear and it will dry quickly. And that's really nice. Okay, so because I have fabric there and I'm going fabric to fa fabric to paper, I'm going to continue to use the Fabri-Tac. Don't need a lot. Just get it around the edge of this. A little bit in the middle. Make sure we don't have any strings. Yeah, I think that'll work. And on the next one. Need a bit around the edge. Tiny bit in the middle. Doesn't take a lot. Sometimes it wants to give you a lot. Okay. This says life is oh, life's journey. I like that. Oh, it's so perfect. Life's journey, beautiful. I'm gonna put that, I'd like to see that life's journey right there. Hmm. I do kind of like, I want to see that life's journey. So I'm thinking I'll move this up. What do you think? What do you think? I don't want to cover that. What about up there? No. All right, right there. That's it, right there. Okay, we're still going uh, paper to fabric, although part of this is paper to paper, but there is fabric involved, and I want it to make sure to stick to that. Um, fabric permanently. So Fabrifix works on paper to paper as well, but to make sure that it's going to work with the paper to fabric, we use that. I'll use that Fabri-Tac, Fabri-Tac, Fabrifix, whichever it is. Okay, I'm just going to run over this a bit with some vintage photo. Yeah, never, don't ever um, hesitate to layer your inks. I think I might need to glue that corner down as well. Layer your inks. It gives a whole new dimension to inking of your papers. There we go. Okay. I'm thinking we need something there. What do you think, people? What do you think? What about that um, little stamp that we were originally going to put down here? Where did that one slide away to? Is that, did it fall into this pile? Or did I put it back in the stamp drawer here? Let's see if I did. It's not the same one, but and that maybe that's not the right thing. Maybe we don't need a stamp up there. Maybe we need, what would we need? Maybe we need a botanical. <laughs> Tree? No, don't think so. Oh, that'd be fun to do on a pink one. To, done with the pink uh, distress oxide, the crowns and things. Uh, let's see what else is here. Hearts and uh, butterflies. Ooh, butterfly might be pretty on there. Or 
hummingbird. I think that's too busy with those down below. We could just do pull these out because I think these are going to be our best bet. Let's put the lid back on that before it boils over. Okay, so we just want something small up there that's maybe too large. Actually, wrong color. That's small. That might work right there. And it's clear. So, so that or butterfly. Actually, I think this. I think this little flower right here is going to be just about perfect. If it comes off of the paper, it will be perfect. There we go. Don't tear. And it's feeling very fragile. I've had some of these stickers for a very long time. That's why I really need to use them up. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Let's see what angle. Mm, 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 mm. I think that works right there. What do you think? Does that work? Yeah, so there's something on the back. And this is going to be full of journal cards and tags and things anyway. Um, the only thing I didn't do was just uh, ink up the lace a little bit. And I, I mentioned it and then didn't do it. I do like to do that before putting it down but it's not impossible to do it afterwards. And if you can't get to it very easily, you just take a piece of paper and stick it underneath it like that and go like that. And then you're not getting everything underneath it um, inked up as well. There we go. Okay, what do you think? There's our pocket. Let's put a tiny bit of glue right here just to make sure this corner stays down. And I will go on and embellish the others. And you embellish yours. And if you made some with me, if you grabbed a couple pieces of paper and you made some with me, I would really love to see yours. I'm very, um, uh, what's the word? Not motivated. I'm very um, inspired by seeing everybody else's. It just, it, it makes me feel creative to see other people's creations. So... Um, love to see your creations. So, and there you have it. There's our little drinking cup pocket that you can make of any size you want and embellish. You can distress them with any color ink, um, but lots of fun. And you can use them in your journals. You could use it just as it is to fill it with something and put it in Happy Mail to somebody, but very nice and very easy to do. All right. Thanks everyone for joining me today and for coming along and making pockets. I hope you're all staying safe. Please take care of yourselves, and I will see you soon on the next video.